In this video, we're going to share four different ways to fix copper pipe leaks. We encountered a copper pipe pinhole leak, which is a pain in the butt, and we're going to show you how to use shark bite fittings to repair that. Shark bites are push in fittings that can be used with copper, CPVC, and PEX. We're going to show you what tools make this repair much easier, how to properly prep copper pipes, and also a tip that's rarely mentioned in other videos about shark bites. First of all, shark bites are great because you don't have to solder up in ceilings and create a fire hazard. For this first fix, we have a pinhole leak and we mark that location using a Sharpie marker. This is gonna be important because we're just gonna use a coupling. The first thing you wanna do is find your house main and this is where you wanna shut off the water to the home. So completely turn that main clockwise and then drain the water from the system, both the hot and cold sides, just in case you're not sure if the pipe is hot or cold. The first tool we're gonna to use is the auto cut tool. This is great. It's a tiny little tool. It clamps on the copper pipe. It also fits in the tight spots as you're going to see here in a second. There's a directional arrow on it. You simply turn the auto cut tool in the direction of that arrow and within a few seconds you're going to have a perfectly square cut on your copper pipe which is really important for shark bite fittings. It's also important for soldering. So we align the cutting wheel over top of our sharpie mark where our pinhole leak was located. We cut the pipe, allowed it to drain a little bit more, and we have about one inch of separation between the two pipes, which is good for our shark bite coupling. The other tool that is really helpful is the shark bite, the burring, and depth gauge tool. There are different slots for different sizes of pipe. For example, we're working with half inch copper pipe, so you insert the pipe into that slot to deburr the outside edge of it and also mark the appropriate depth for the shark bite fitting. This tool is really helpful with that. Once you get done with deburring the outside edge of the copper pipe, Pipe, it's critical to also deburr the inside of the copper pipe with another deburring tool. That way you won't have burrs that will accidentally sever or damage the o-ring inside the shark bite fitting. And you always want to take your finger and just run it over the edge of the pipe to make sure you don't have those burrs. For this first copper pipe leak we rotated the deburring tool clockwise around the copper pipe, marked the depth for our shark bite coupling, and then we used our little pencil deburring tool to deburr the inside of the copper pipe. These little pencil deburring tools are great for tight spots like up in ceilings. And an additional tip is to use emery cloth on the edge of the pipe to make sure it's smooth and then use a pipe cleaning tool to pull out any of the copper shards from the inside of the pipe. The white tubes inside these shark bite fittings are called pipe stiffeners. You can leave them in there for copper pipes. You simply push the shark bite fitting onto the copper pipe to the appropriate depth. It will spin, that's normal, and you just want to make sure that it's on the entire way. So back to our pinhole leak, we pushed on our coupling and made it connect with the two pieces of copper pipe and that's it. That's how we fixed our copper pinhole leak in about five minutes. The second type of copper pipe fix you might have to make is to remove a longer section that has corroded. Mark on either side of the corroded section and then use the auto cut tool to cut out that damaged piece of copper pipe. This is why we love the auto cut tool. It only takes a few seconds to do that. Then the deburr the outside edge of the copper pipe with the shark bite deburring tool and then the inside deburring tool and then remove those shards using your pipe cleaner and then feel the edge to make sure it's nice and smooth and finally just mark the depth that you need for your shark bite fitting. Shark bites can be removed either via the disconnect tongs or c-clips. These are the tongs and we like this method the best. You just want to depress the release collar on the edge of the shark bite fitting and pull it off your copper pipe. Super simple to do and that's exactly what we're doing here for the coupling that we installed for our first fix. Just make sure you inspect a shark bite fitting to make sure there's no debris inside of it because that can interfere with the connection and cause leaks. So place one coupling on each copper pipe and then get a measurement between those couplings and add two inches to your measurement because the copper pipe needs to go inside those couplings by about one inch. As you can see here, we still have a little bit of water running and the nice thing is this does not affect the installation of shark bites unlike soldering. So you simply just push the copper pipe into the first coupling and then into the second. This is obviously much easier if you have some flex in the copper pipes. So if you do have some flex, this is a great installation and fix that you can make. Shark bite couplings are great if you have flex 
cracks in your copper pipes and they move back and forth. And instead of using this though, you can use a slip-in fitting if you don't have that flexibility. You just want to slide the slip-in fitting the whole way onto the copper pipe, get a measurement between it and your coupling, and then add two inches to that measurement to get your copper pipe cut that you need to make your fix. By the way, slip-in fittings don't work for PEX, only copper and CPVZ. Then you can use the disconnect tongs to slide the slip-in fitting onto the new piece of copper pipe. This is a really great installation technique if you don't have flex in your copper pipes. And you can add a clamp, a copper clamp, to secure the copper pipe to your joist. So again, this is another fix that you can do. A fourth way to repair a copper pipe leak is with PEX. We've got some corrosion still in this copper pipe, so we're going to cut that out using the auto cut tool. The reason why we like PEX is because it's so flexible and easy to use. Again, you have to deburr both the outside edge and inside edge of this copper pipe. That's really important still. And you also have to remove any copper shards from the inside of the copper pipe. Push on your coupling, make sure it's to the right depth, put on the other coupling and get a rough measurement. Then install your PEX into the first coupling and then mark the location of the first one inch that's going into the second coupling. You can cut this square using your PEX cutters, mark the depth of cut with the tool, and then simply push in the PEX. You can see how flexible and easy it is to use. Now you may have to use something like this to support the PEX, and that's really important to stay to code. Now here's a tip that we wanted to share with you. When connecting a shark bite fitting to a copper piping system, you need to have a copper jumper cable before and after your shark bite fittings because they are not an electric electrically continuous fitting. These are just some ways to fix a copper pipe leak. If you like these tips, make sure you give us a thumbs up and let us know if you have any questions in the comments because we're more than happy to help out.